Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do an example of mesh analysis using AC steady state concepts. So our um, independent sources are going to be cosines, and we will try to find out what the current I sub x flowing through the two Henry inductor is. So that's our goal. Our first step is to convert um, our voltages into phasors. So we look at what we have here. We can see that omega is equal to pi. And uh, we have a 2 cosine pi t, so we can change this into a phasor, which would just be 2 at an angle of 0. Now we have 3 cosine pi t minus 60 degrees. So this one will be 3 at an angle of minus 60 degrees. OK. So we've uh, now converted the time domain uh, cosines into phasors. Next step is to find the impedance of the inductor and the impedance of the capacitor. So the impedance of the inductor is J times 2 Henry's times omega, which in this case will be J times 6.283. Okay, or I just multiply 2 times omega, which is pi. The capacitor will be 1 over j omega c, which will be um, 1 over j times pi over 3. That's omega times c. And I work this out, I get minus j times 0.955 ohms. I should point out this is ohms as well. OK, so let's replace our values with their impedances. So we have ZL is J 6.283 ohms. And uh, ZC. is minus j.955 ohms. OK, and we'll make these guys go away. OK, step three is to determine the loop currents, or the mesh currents, I'm sorry. Actually, I guess first identify the meshes, identify the mesh currents, and get some equations in terms of the mesh currents. You can see that this circuit has two meshes. And so we'll define a current on the left mesh as I1. And uh, a current on the right mesh as I2. And now we just apply a Kirchhoff's voltage law around each of the meshes. So starting at uh, the 1 ohm resistor here, applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around mesh 1, we get 1 ohm times I1 plus J6.283 times I1 plus negative j 0.955 ohms, there should be ohms here too, times I1 minus I2 minus 3 at an angle of negative 60. Whoops, that should be plus. I'm going positive to negative. I was getting ahead of myself, minus 2 at an angle of 0 degrees. And this is all equal to 0. 
And we can simplify this somewhat and put it in the following form that will make it easier to uh, do the uh, computations in uh, Wolfram Alpha. So we factor an I1 out where we can. So we have a 1 ohm plus J 6.283 ohms minus J 0.955 ohms minus I2 times minus J 0.955 ohms. And now we'll move all of our independent voltages to the other side of the equation. So we'll have 2 at an angle of 0 degrees minus 3 at an angle of minus 60 degrees. Okay, so we're close, but there's one more thing that it'd be helpful to be able to do, and that is to get this expression on the right-hand side into rectangular form, because that's the form that Wolfram Alpha likes the best, and it's easiest to manipulate. So um, this guy here is pretty easy. That's just a real part of 2 and an imaginary part of nothing. But the minus 3 at an angle of negative 60 uh, turns out to be a little trick here. But it turns out I can use Wolfram to do this, or Wolfram Alpha. So I'll write it as minus 3. And then it's going to be raised to the power of minus 60 divided by 180 times pi. So what I'm doing here is I'm converting from uh, degrees to radians, which Wolfram Alpha seems to need. And then this is going to be raised, or have include an i. And I got this wrong also. We want this to be e raised to this power. And the reason that I'm doing e raised to the minus i 60 over 180 times pi is that's one way of inputting a complex number into Wolfram Alpha. Um, you'll recall that the e to the i times something is cosine of the something plus i times sine of the something. So we plug this in and see what we get. We get a nice decimal approximation, which is 1.5 uh, plus 2.598 times i. So we go back to our e equation, and we have then 2 minus 1.5 plus 2.598j. OK. So again, we're doing this because it will make it easier to plug it into Wolfram Alpha in just a minute. So let's take this equation. Oops. Let's try that again. And we'll move it up here. We'll remember that this is the equation we got from loop 1. OK, let's look at loop 2. So with loop 2, uh, I guess we'll start here at the capacitor. We have I2 minus I1 times minus J.955. plus I2 times 4 ohms. That should have an ohms in front of it, or after it. Plus 2 times Ix. And we have then again minus 3 at an angle of minus 60 degrees. And this is equal to 0. OK. So in order to put this into a form that we can use nicely, uh, one thing we need to know is what Ix is. You'll notice Ix is this current right here. And that turns out to be the same as I1. So that's I1. 
If we take this 3 at an angle of negative 60 and move it to the opposite side, then we'd want to replace it by uh, its rectangular value because that'll make our life easier. So we go back to Wolfram Alpha and uh, we're actually pretty close to computing this. We just have 3 rather than negative 3 to the negative 60 and it ends up being 1.5 minus 2.598 J. So we go back and we'll write that down. This becomes 1.5 minus J 2.598. Okay, and so we can um, tidy up this equation as minus I1 times negative J 0.955 ohms plus 2. And this 2 comes from over here. Although I need to change the sign. I either need to change this guy to a negative. Well, I need to change this to a negative because negative I1 times negative 2 gives me the positive 2 I1 here. Plus I2 times minus J.955 ohms plus Four ohms. And this is equal to 1.5 minus J 2.598. Okay, so all we need to do is plug this equation and this equation into Wolfram Alpha tell it to solve them, and we'll have our values for I1 and I2. So let's go to Wolfram Alpha and type in our equations. I'm going to call I1 A1 because Wolfram Alpha thinks I is the square root of negative 1. So we have A1 times 1 plus I times 6.283 minus i times 0 0.955 minus a2 times minus i 0 0.99555 and this will be equal to 0 0.5 plus Uh, I 2.598. Okay, and then we have a negative A1 times negative I 0 0.955 minus 2 plus A2 4 minus I 0 0.955 and this is equal to 1.5 minus I 2.598. And let's see what it gives us. Okay, we can see down here at the bottom that I1 is 5.66 probably minus uh, J 1.25. I2 is minus uh, 0 0.121 minus uh, J 0.795. So uh, the next thing we need to do is we found, or well, let's back up. We've solved for I1 and I2, and now we need to put them into polar form, and that will be uh, the end of step three. So at the risk of running a little bit over my time, we will put these guys in. OK. 
okay this is our um, our I1 and we discover that it's about 0 0.580 at an angle of minus 12.5 degrees and I could do the same for I2 I won't because I'm pressed for time so um, if I go back to my picture here uh, we can say then that I1 is uh, 0 0.580 amps at an angle of minus 12.5 degrees. So the last step would be to say that I1 of t, which is also, this is the same as Ix of t, is 0 0.580 amps cosine of pi t minus 12.5 degrees. So there you have it, an example of applying mesh analysis using AC steady state analysis. So hopefully you found this useful.